Okay, here comes some example problems. Again, if uh, my pre-lesson confused you a little bit, I hope it tightens it up right now, okay? So here are three parabolas. Y equals this, Y equals this, Y equals this. Now, just so you know, um, that's your traditional setup for a parabola. Now, your homework is going to have this. They're going to be all equal to zero, so they're already giving you a little boost telling you, hey, find the zeros. They're setting y equal to zero. I'm throwing that little nugget in for free. Because remember, any point on my x-axis, y equals zero. So if this is delivered to you, y equals diddly do. First thing you got to do is set that y equal to zero so that you can find your x-intercepts, because that's what your whole mission is right now, OK? So with that being said, we also know that this whole lesson is about the discriminant. So if we stuff things in here and we get the square root of some positive number, we know there's going to be two solutions. If we get the square root of zero, exactly zero, that's going to be a situation where it comes down, touches it one time, and we have one solution. And if we get the square root of some wild negative number, because that's mathematically impossible, that's a parabola that never, it doesn't mean the parabola doesn't exist, it just means it doesn't ever touch the x-axis. So let's experiment with these right here. So, because these are all nice and neat, there's my A, there's my B, there's my C, yes, I could take the whole thing and just plug it in, but remember, the discriminant is going to be the part of this that's going to really spoon feed us our answers because we've got our rules, okay? So, b squared would be negative 7, negative 7 is 49, minus 4 times a times c. Keep chugging along, 49, 6 times 4 is 24. I could stop right now. I get the square root of 25. I knew this was positive. I know this is positive. Again, we're not worried about the answer. It's how many solutions are there going to be. There are going to be two real solutions for this one. So if I was to graph it, and you can always do that on decimals, you'll see that there are two solutions. That's all they want. Let's try this one. So same thing. Here's my A, here's my B, here's my C. So the square root of b squared, 144, that's 12 squared, minus 4, times a, times c. Oh, and I was almost habitually going to just put over 2a. Don't need to do that. So 144, and that's 16 times 9. If I did the old math out, that would be minus 144. Notice this is 0. You go, aha. That's where, if I had some stuff, plus or minus zero over some stuff, my answer would be whatever, like 10 over 2 would be 5. But the rule is, if that's a zero, there's one solution, and that would be a real solution. It would be like this one. Last one. Can you guess what's going to happen on this one? So, do that. Here comes the discriminant. So negative b, remember, my a is a 1, it's hidden. b is 2, c is 8. Negative b, plus or minus, negative b, oh boy, I'm getting this part of it all messed up. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that would be 4, minus 4 a c, all over 2a, but we don't need it. So that would be the square root of 4 minus 32. We go, aha, that's going to be the square root of a big old negative. That means there are zero solutions. And that's all you're going to be asked to do for a portion of your lesson. Good luck.